Okay, welcome to the video, Sig Guy here. In this video, we're going to show you how to install the new Armory Craft Type 2 Sport Takedown Lever in your Sig Sauer P226. In the first part of this video, we'll go over the different design characteristics of the Sport Takedown Lever. And in the last part of the video, we'll show you how to install it. So with that, let's get started. So let's talk about the different design characteristics of the Armory Craft Type 2 Sport Takedown Lever uh, before we get into our installation. So first we're going to make sure we're clear and safe on both of these firearms, which is no round in the chamber, no magazine. We're good on that one. And the same on this one, no round. This one does need to be cleaned. No magazine. We're good on that one. So Armory Craft based their design on the 226X5 American Takedown Lever that SIG came out with on their pistol not too long ago. And this takedown lever basically gives us a place to put our thumb to apply some downward pressure to help with that muzzle flip and allow us to do faster follow-up shots. So that's the whole basis of basically any of these uh, takedown levers, the sports style takedown levers. So on SIGs here, we got this check ring here in the middle, strip of it, there's none on the side here, none on this side here. Uh, it's flat here, flat here. Uh, theirs is a MIM product, and it's hollow, and uses this pin here to keep that from rotating as we're pushing down on it, okay? So if we take a look at the Armory Craft one, um, our checkering is the whole surface to include the sides, okay? It's a little bit more aggressive than the SIG one. And then we do not have a flat surface here. It's tapered, as you can see. And that's going to help with holstering one less snag point theirs is a solid cnc part it's not mim and it does use the pin here to help it from rot or keep it from rotating and this is our trigger pivot pin okay um, there is another design feature that armory craft improved upon and if we take a look at our frame here This portion here, which is kind of like a little ramp. Okay, it's like a swoop, swoops up. If we look at our takedown lever when we rotate it, you can see it gets closer to that swoop. Okay, so depending on which pistol you have in the design of that swoop, there could be some interference there. Okay, which would scratch the side of your frame. So what Armory Craft did is they made their slightly shorter to get it away from that swoop and make it so it does not contact it and also if you look at underneath here and it's hard to show this but the shading and the light on that you can see how this edge here is kind of bent away from which would be the side of your frame okay so it's kind of bent out a little bit which actually helps keep it away from that swoop as well and then they do have this cut up top, up top here and that interfaces with our slide here when we're slightly rotating this up to get the pin free of the takedown lever so we can push our pin out and take down our pistol. So those are the different design characteristics of the sport takedown lever. Let's talk about which pistols this will actually work in. As far as fitment for the Type 2 sport takedown lever from Armory Craft, all this stuff is right on the website, right in the description. Uh, so please take a minute to read the description to make sure that this is going to fit properly in your pistol. So this fits all 226 double action, single action models, including the Legion. It fits the Gen 1, Gen 2, German, X5, X6, and X short. The 226 LDC and LDC2. 
in the US made 226X5, okay? This will not fit the P220, P227, 228, 229, M11A1. Uh, reason being is there is a different distance between the pivot point on our takedown lever and our trigger pivot pin, okay? So they are coming out with one for the 229, which is shorter, I believe, shorter or longer, I don't remember which, but this pin in relation to the pivot point on our takedown lever is different. That's why this one won't fit in the 229, okay? Uh, it says, our latest Type 2 takedown lever has a similar footprint outline to the stock US X5 SAS takedown lever. It has significantly enhanced texture for easier indexing and better recoil control. When compared to the X5 STAS takedown lever, our lever is more tapered in the front, which improves holstering. This takedown lever is also about one millimeter shorter than the STAS, so it can be used on all 226, 226 Elite, and 226 Legion models as well, okay? And then it goes into talking about our trigger pivot pin, which we'll go over in just a minute. So let me get all set up, and then we'll show you how we're going to install this into our 226 Legion. As you can see, I have installed my original sport takedown lever. This is the Type 1 just the regular sport takedown lever from Armory Craft. Um, so we're going to be removing this and installing our new Type 2. The Type 2 comes with a new trigger pivot pin. Okay. So this trigger pivot pin is the same pretty much as the pin in it, but it has the groove. It's a little bit longer, and it has the groove here on the end that captures our takedown lever like that so it doesn't rotate downwards anymore when we're pushing on it okay so one thing to notice about this trigger pivot pin is the original one the slot is always on the left hand side on the new one that slot is going to go on the other side okay so it's just like the american 226 x5 the slot is over here on this side uh, it's going to be the same way on this one, obviously. Here's our slot, and then there's our groove for our takedown lever. So that's got to be on the left side, and the slot has got to be on the right side. Okay? So as always, we're going to make sure we're working on a clear and safe firearm. So we're going to lock our slide to the rear. We're going to physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber, no magazine. Check our breech face, look away, do the same thing again. Chamber, magazine, breech face. We are working on a clear and safe firearm. Next, we're going to remove our slides. We're going to lock it to the rear. We're going to rotate our takedown lever down. We're going to make sure there's no magazine in it because we can't remove our slide if there's a magazine in it. We're going to release our slide, and we're going to set that aside. Next, we're going to remove our existing takedown lever. So I usually push on it with my finger like this as I rotate it and pull it out this side. And then we're going to remove our locking insert or locking block as well. I usually put it on the side so that way this little spring doesn't fall off and get lost. And we'll set that aside as well. Now there's going to be two different ways you can do this. For those of you that have a tool kit for the 226, this is the deluxe kit. It has tools in it for the 365, 320, and your classic series. We have three different punches in here. We have a sear spring screwdriver. We have a 90 degree pick. And we have our um, punch here as well. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if you have the tool kit, which comes with the large pin alignment tool, we can simply just take our pin alignment tool, use it to push out our trigger pivot pin, just like that. And we don't have to disassemble anything. We don't have to take our grip off. We don't have to undo our trigger bar spring. And then we ain't got to worry about our slide catch coming undone and falling out and all that stuff. We can simply just take our new trigger pivot pin. Make sure this, the slot is going towards the right. We can use that to push out our slave pin. Just like that. And it's as simple as that. It is installed. Okay, so that's a very good thing about my tool kits. Um, when we're replacing our sear spring, we can use that 
proper size pin alignment tool to push out our pivot pin in there. Basically pull it out just a little bit, remove our spring, put the new spring in there um, and push this back through and then use our original pin to push this out and you ain't got to disassemble all this stuff. So these save a lot of time. If you don't have a tool kit, you can get them on sigguy.com as well as many other different uh, tools and parts as well. So uh, I'm going to reinstall my original pin back in here because most people probably don't have the tool kit. And we'll show you the installation procedure um, as if you do not have the pin alignment kit, okay? So if you do not have the tool kit, we're going to show you how to install this trigger pivot pin as well. And for those of you that do not have the pin alignment kit or something like that, we're going to show you how to install the trigger pivot pin. So we're going to have to remove the grip panel on this side. Reason being is because we're going to have to disconnect our trigger bar spring. Our trigger bar spring is putting tension on our trigger bar, which puts tension on our trigger. And once we knock this pin out, uh, it's very difficult to get the trigger lined back up with everything and get that pin back through if the spring is attached. Okay. So we're going to remove our grip panel on this side. And we're going to use a proper tool to do that. If you've got the flat tip screws, uh, the flat tip screwdriver will work, but it's not the proper tool. And what I mean by that is on our tool here, you can see our tip is actually rounded. It's not flat across because our screws are actually beveled like this. Um, and that allows that screwdriver to get all the way down in there. If you got the wrong size screwdriver, you're going to damage the screws on your uh, grip panel, your grip panel screws. So once we have our grip panel removed, we're going to look at our trigger bar spring. And what I recommend also is taking video of all this stuff as you're taking it apart. That way, if you're not quite sure how something goes back together, you can refer back to your video. You can zoom in on it. You know, you can see very good detail where everything was at and it saves a lot of time and aggravation. So every step, I usually take a video when I'm first taking something apart. Um, that way, if I do mess something up, I can refer to the video to correct it. So I don't know what I mean by that. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because of trigger bar springs, depending on which model 226 you have, double action versus single action. Um, there are different trigger bars and there are holes and cuts and slits and whatever in the trigger bar that would allow you to put the trigger bar spring into that hole or that slit, um, but it's not the proper one. And then people put their pistols back together. Um, the trigger won't function properly. It's because they've got the trigger bar incorrectly installed. So make sure you take a picture of which hole it is in, the orientation of it. If you put this going the other way, it's going to get pinched by our grip panel when we tighten it up. It's not going to work properly either. So um, this is how mine is. So I'm basically going to pull my trigger bar spring out. We're going to set that aside just like that. I moved my safety up so I can get more access to that hole. My trigger can be back. That's fine. That's not going to mess with anything. And then we're just going to take a punch and we're going to push our trigger pivot pin out. I'm going to pull it out the side just like that. And then your slide catch, slide release, that will either fall out. Um, we'll take it out so you know how to put it back in. So now you can see our trigger is floating pretty freely in there. Okay. It allows us to line up that hole pretty easily without fighting our trigger bar and trigger bar spring. So now we'll show you how to install that pivot pin. So let's talk about our trigger pivot pin before we install it. We've already talked about the groove here on the end that interacts with our takedown lever. So obviously that needs to be on the left-hand side of the pistol on this side over here. Okay. And then our slit in here, which is typically on the left-hand side, it needs to be on the right-hand side. Okay. Slit on the right-hand side. And then this notch here on the left hand side. You also have two notches in the pivot pin here. Those interact with our locking insert. So those two notches need to be facing seven o'clock when that pin is installed. So it's got to be down on this side here, not up on this side here. When you put your pivot pin in, the, the slot on the end here is always horizontally positioned. Okay. So it's either like that or it's like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's always horizontal. Okay. So I'm not going to install my slide catch yet. 
because it's kind of hard to see in here what's going on. So I'm going to take my pivot pin. That slot there needs to go <clears throat> to the right. So we'll install that through there just like that. And it's also going to be flush with this side once we're all installed. Okay. So that's going to be its final position, maybe. And what I mean by that is, are my notches inside? I'm going to do this incorrectly so you can better see what I'm talking about. So this is the, let me zoom in also. So you can see here, this is my trigger pivot pin, and that's one of those notches right here on that pivot pin. Right now it's facing up here, so at 2 o'clock it needs to be down here, okay? So all I need to do is rotate that pivot pin 180 degrees, because remember it's always going to be horizontal the slit in that side okay so now when we look at our pivot pin trigger pivot pin you can see that notch isn't facing us it's actually down on the bottom here which is the correct position okay so that's the way that would need to go in there i gotta back this out just a little bit so i can get my my slide catch in there so we're going to reinstall that i basically just take the hole in the slide catch I line it up with the hole in the frame, and then we're going to push in on our pivot pin. Oops, now that's backwards. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work. So let's push this out a little bit. Rotate that around. Put our trigger bar pin back through it, or pivot pin. And then when we lay it down, that's proper. And then when we put our locking insert in, a lot of times our trigger bar, it likes to hang out like here. Okay? Just because the way it's designed and gravity and all that stuff, it kind of likes to stay like that. And then you cannot get your locking insert in no matter how much you fight with it. you got to make sure that your slide release, slide catch, whatever one you want to call it, is right up against the frame. And I usually push on it on this end here. Push this end here, and it keeps that one tight against the side of our frame, okay? So again, I'm going to make sure that my pivot pin is horizontal, which it is. The notches are in the bottom. It's flush on this side. And we're going to take our locking insert. I'm going to slide it down in there, just like that. So if your locking block isn't dropping right down in there and you're having a little hard time with it, um, sometimes you got to move your pin side to side a little bit. Sometimes you got to rotate it with your screwdriver a little bit. Sometimes you got to kind of fiddle with your slide catch here before it drops right down in there. But once everything's lined up correctly, it will drop down in there. You shouldn't have to hammer or force or pry anything um, to get it in there, okay? So now that I have my locking insert in there, I'm going to install my takedown lever. That way it does not fall out on me when I'm installing my uh, trigger bar spring. So now that I have that in there, I'm gonna reinstall my trigger bar spring. If you don't remember how this goes, basically refer to your video that you took. Just like that. Just like that. So now we're going to rotate our takedown lever down, okay? And let's, let's go over this really quick because it's a lot easier to show you without the slide on. So this trigger pivot pin, it's made to go in and out, okay? So when we're, when we're, when we're done with everything, it needs to be flush on this side. Uh, we can't have it flush on this side at this time because then we can't rotate our takedown lever, okay? So we got to kind of keep it flush on this side for now. That way we can rotate this around like we need to. So we'll rotate that down just like that. We'll take our slide. We'll reinstall our slide. Okay. We're going to rotate our takedown lever up. 
we're going to release our slide and then we're going to rotate this up ever so slightly see how we got just a little bit of play there where it goes into that notch on the slide plus the groove and our takedown lever allows it to go up a little bit and then we can push our trigger pivot pin all the way out until it's flush on this side okay and then our takedown lever fits right into that slot that's on that pin and what that pin does is it allows it to not rotate no matter how hard we push down on this okay some of the other takedown levers out there if you push down on these too hard they rotate and that's not a good situation especially when you're in a shooting situation okay so that's the whole gist of the pin how it interlocks with our takedown lever and the only thing that we have left is to reinstall our grip panel. Just like that. And there you go. Uh, obviously, we'd want to do a functions check to make sure that everything is reinstalled correctly, and then we'd want to go out to the range and test fire it uh, before returning this to service. And there you have it. It is that easy to install the Armory Craft Type 2 Sport takedown lever in your Sig Sauer P226, and it is another excellent upgrade from Armory Craft. They make so much stuff for the Sig Sauer's, as you can see in this video on this pistol alone. Um, this is my 226 SAO Legion. You can see I got their skeletonized hammer in here. Skeletonized trigger, uh, extended mag release, mag well. I got their base pads on my magazines. You've seen that purple competition sear spring in here. I got their main spring, and that comes in the Ultimate Master Spring Tuning Kit. I got their guide rod in here with one of the springs that comes in their 226 um, recoil tuning kit. Um, and this thing is just, it's always been my best shooter as far as the trigger pull and the way the trigger feels uh, up until I got the uh, 226X5 from the Master Shop and then the 226X5 from SIG USA. Uh, those kind are a little bit in their league of their own, but when compared all three together, they are very similar in the way the trigger pull feels. So if you have a DASA or an SAO, whatever, 226, 22, all the classics, um, there are so many different upgrades that you can put in those and get a much better trigger pull. So all these parts are available on SIGGuy.com as well as the toolkits that we talked about earlier. Uh, I do make a toolkit just for the 365s if that's all you have. I got one for the 320, I got one for the classics, and then I got a kit here that combines all those kits into one, um, the deluxe kit, so you ain't got to buy multiple kits. All this stuff is available on SIGGuy.com. Uh, if you like this type of content and you found this video helpful, please subscribe using the button right down here. As always, I thank everybody for watching and have a great day.